everybody. How's everybody going out there? Hope you're having a great day, whatever day it is. We're going to be taping. This is our intro to a really cool episode on how animals deal with winter. So your Zoo Adventures team, Steve's in front of the camera. Chelsea's behind today. Hi, everybody. It's always nice to have Chelsea with us. Um, and again, how animals deal with winter. So excited. I have three, at least two for sure. And we'll, oh, look, Leslie's coming in. Hi. I wonder what she's doing here. Why? Uh, hey! Why are you? What are you doing here? Uh, well, I have a program in here soon. What are you doing? You have a program in here? Yeah. Oh, we're doing our intro for the next pro for our yeah. next zoo adventures. We're all just doing so many, so many amazing things, right? Oh, it's been crazy, <laughs> hasn't it? All this going on. Well, so, so Chelsea knew the answer to this. I'm gonna, as you're okay. putting your critter down. Yeah. We're talking about how animals deal with winter. Okay. Chelsea knew. Do you know how animals deal with winter, kind of in general? Yeah, so I have a little saying. Oh, you have a saying? Yeah, I have a, I have a little saying. Leslie always has a saying. I love things that rhyme or are alliterative. So I usually say they either stay, go away, or sleep all day. How awesome is that? <laughs> Chelsea was a little more specific than that. Yeah, I mean, so. that's the easy way of describing it. But yeah. so like, you know, stay, they kind of deal with it. They're right. adapted to it. Yep. Um, we're going to meet an animal that does that. Yeah. Go away. They, they migrate. They just get away from We're going to learn about that, too. And actually, I have an animal that does the last one. So no, sleep, do you really? Sleep all day. So we that think was of, when we were, we didn't know how we were going to do. Nah. Seriously. So check this. How cool is this? As it happens, we have a program. We didn't know how we were going to do our last one. So we did, so you talked about animals that stay, mm -hmm. talked about animals that leave. Uh -huh. What does this guy do? So this would be the sleep all day, basically. Oh, and nice. And a lot of times we use that word hibernation, right? Oh, that's right. Sleeping. Um, a lot of animals will, hib will hibernate right. during those really cold seasons. Basically, a lot of times with hibernation, they eat a lot of food. So we think of like bears um, oh, eating yeah. a lot of food, and then they'll bulk up, and then yep. they're able to just sleep throughout the coldest part. Now, these guys don't like bulk up or anything like that. No, but they really sleep. They do. They well, they go down and they hide. Okay. They build a burrow. You can see these nice, these oh, it does. a little bit, those nice claws for digging. Yep. So, by the way, this is Franklin, the box turtle, the eastern box turtle. <laughs> so, oh, I guess that's, we probably should have done that earlier, I guess, huh? Introduce so, our friend. Eastern box turtle, right. and his name is Franklin. We make sure to get that out. Eastern box turtle, name Franklin. Okay, now let's move forward. So, he can dig a nice burrow okay. and then go down where it stays a little bit warmer down there. Oh. And when it's very, very cold, then he has a place to hide and stay safe and, and sleep all day, basically. Gotcha. But here, do you want to hear a really fancy word? You got a science word? I have a super science word. That's even better than hibernation? Oh, I mean, I think it's more fun to say. Let's, let's hear it. Okay, so they do something called brewmating. Brewmating? Yeah, or brumation, basically. So brumation. Hibernation, similar mm -hmm. apparently? They're similar, okay. yeah. Well, so they're the very, very similar. We use the word brewmate or brumation for usually reptiles. Okay. Um, so they're ectotherms, another nice fancy word. I love that Basically word. Basically means cold-blooded. Yeah, we've learned um, that. And so they get the temperature from around them. So when it's really, really cold, oh. they get really, really cold. So they have to go someplace where it's warmer. So, so that's they why they go under burrows. the ground. A little mm -hmm. bit more, okay, a little more consistent temperature maybe too? Right. But the weirdest thing. There's something even yeah, weirder. <laughs> is that because they're ectothermic, everything kind of just slows down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So they don't really have to eat as much. Oh. The, all of their body systems just kind of slow down. Do and they talk slower too? Yeah, they do. They talk just <laughs> like <laughs> this. Talk to me. <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> That's what happens. Wow. So yeah. So when they're in that kind of brumating or brumation, their body system or their body, uh, the systems in their bodies have slowed down Got quite you. a bit. Yeah. We've learned about that with some alligators sometimes. They actually uh -huh. said they actually told us once that they don't even feed the alligators in the wintertime um, because if they do, the food doesn't process. It just sits yeah. in their stomach. Uh -huh. If so, one of the ways that these guys will kind of know when it's that time to, mm -hmm. to, to burrow and go into that broom and to broomate is the t the temperature colder, obviously. Then they're like, oh, can't move as much, um, can't digest that food as much. 
and then also light. So the, the days really? get darker. And so being able, or darker quicker, and they're shorter, so they, they know that that light is kind of like, oops, seasons are changing, time gotcha. is changing. that's well, cool. Yeah. So you're getting ready to do a program. We didn't really officially, I mean, you guys all know Leslie. You've seen Leslie, you've met Leslie in the few, in the, in the few. but you're the school's programs coordinator? Right, yeah, yeah. So the school programs coordinator, and you're going to do a program. So yeah. we don't want to get be too much longer. I don't know when your program starts, but is there anything that we really want to make sure that our guests know about box turtles in general? Is there kind of one or two fun facts? Um, I mean, my favorite facts about box turtles is their ability to completely close oh, up like yeah, a box. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they have name, a right? hinge right here. Yeah. And that hinge allows the the, sh the bottom shell or the plaster on to, to Ooh, literally close up. Word. You're full of fancy oh, science words today. I, I love, love it. I love a science word. Absolutely. Um, so basically bottom shell. You have your care piss and your plaster on. Yay! Um, and I think that's really cool. Not a lot of turtles can do that. No. There are some uh, turtles that have double hinges and they can kind of do it too, but box turtles. No kidding. Yeah, pretty neat. I think that's a really cool thing. So they're able to truly pull their whole entire body inside of their shell and, that and then close it up all the way to look like a little box. I love it. That's, such mm -hmm. a, that's a great little fact, that's for sure. This is one of my and the facts. state reptile of North oh, Carolina. Oh, the North Carolina state reptile. Gotta yeah. share it out there. Gotta yeah, these guys there. are awesome. And a turtle that's very tortoise-like, so that big dome shell. That's true. They don't really hang out in the water. They're not great swimmers. So if you ever see one, you know, don't put don't, it back in the water. Don't throw it back in the water, yeah. right? That's not, not, not um, home. They, they live on land. They build burrows in the, in the ground. Great um, advice. Great very advice. Very tortoise-like turtle. Yep. But they are, they are technically turtles. Very cool. Yeah. Well, we'll let you get ready. Awesome. Uh, yeah. We've got to head out to another thing. So that was so awesome. So we're talking about animals and how they deal with winter in this episode. It is taped, so we're going to be kind of bouncing around the park a little bit. So we talked about hibernation or brumation. What a fun science, fun, fun science word from Leslie. Um, so now we've got to go to uh, an animal that deals with winter. I think that's last. Uh, and then animals that leave. And there's a really neat hook with why animals leave. Let's check it out. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Hope everything's going well, having an awesome day. Wasn't that neat to learn about hibernation? One of the ways that animals deal with winter, since winter's approaching pretty quickly. A couple other ways animals deal with winter. Uh, well, we'll get to the third one in a minute. But we have curator Debbie Zombeck with us today. Hey everybody. And one of the things that animals do is they migrate. Debbie, can you define migration for us? Migration is the seasonal movement patterns of, patterns of animals Okay. Um, for birds. It's, you know, in the fall, they're going to move south. Not all species, but okay. many species do uh, because food resources are becoming limited, especially oh, insects. Sure. Temperatures are getting colder. And so they're going to move south where there's more food and um, the temps are better for them. Nice. And then in the spring, they're going to move further north There's uh, to look for more nesting sites. Food is getting oh, more abundant. Oh, okay. And so we have that twice a year movement pattern. So, they're, so in our world, they're leaving because food resources are going down. Right. A piece of paper sliding away there. <laughs> and then they come back as food resources build up here. Yes, that's right. And then they can nest and raise their young. Absolutely. So they're aware of that all the time. Mm -hmm. I should mention that Curator Zombeck is the curator of birds, <laughs> so I get to cheat a little bit and bring in the right resources. <laughs> um, so I have a globe with me. Uh-huh. And so when you say migration, here's, I mean, here's North America and the United States. Are you telling me that birds will really leave from this area mm -hmm. and they'll fly down to South America? Yeah. and All you know, that way? Yeah, and it depends on the bird species. You know, oh, okay. some go further south than others. For instance, oh, wow. hummingbirds, which we all love, the rheumatroid hummingbird that oh, is yeah. in North Carolina, they migrate south in the fall and they usually live leave around mid-october and they're going down to southern mexico and maybe down to northern panama and sometimes they actually will winter over uh, along the gulf coast of florida okay. and the tip of florida but they other wow. birds could go much further south than that it just depends on the specific species and what resources they're looking for okay so it south. depends on so it kind of depends on what they're 
habitat, what their habits yes. are, what yes. habitat they're looking for. Absolutely. So the hummingbird, this is in the North Carolina region here. I know Chelsea's amazing on the camera. <laughs> So you're saying they'll go from here to southern Mexico sometimes, yeah. and even into Panama. And they'll cross over the Gulf That's of Mexico, crazy. which is a pretty daunting They fly task. over the Gulf of Mexico? Some of the, yeah, quite a few of them do. And so they wow. have to pay attention to weather patterns and things like that to make a trip like that. Oh, no there kidding. Yeah, sure. There are things yeah, that they sure. cue into. Now, is there really a bird that flies from here to here? Yes. The Arctic Tern is an really? amazing seabird that nests in um, the far north you know, close to the Arctic Circle in many cases, also in, in for the Uni United States along the northern Atlantic, and goes and winters down um, in Antarctica. They, wow. they live on pack ice and are able to fish off that area. The food supplies are really good down there for it. It's, it's actually summer when they go down to Antarctica. <laughs> oh, that's right. So they have the two summers a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? But can you imagine, guys, up here and flying all the way down? Whatever the route is, I don't know exactly where to put the following. So, Debbie, is a lot of birds do this, of course. We know that a lot of the birds will do it around here. Yeah. Is it dangerous for birds to migrate? It can be dangerous. Um, you know, there's predators they deal with when they're oh, migrating. Sure. If they don't have adequate food supplies, they might not make it. And, you know, our landscape is changing mm, um, dramatically as birds sometimes. Yeah. Migrate through habitat loss. You know, wetlands are being drained. Sure. Um, forests are disappearing. And birds have been migrating for thousands and thousands of years. Many Can't of this that. is uh, determined partly genetically, the migration sure. patterns they follow. And so if we're changing things and the food's not there anymore, it can be really problematic. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're seeing is that man-made structures are becoming problems like communication towers and tall buildings, especially for birds that migrate at night. If these structures have lights on them, the birds okay. are attracted to light. And so we lose, um, you know, quite a few birds every year. Um, through through dangers like hitting those structures. So is that why you asked us to meet here? I know that the Stedman Education Building here at the North Carolina Zoo has done some really cool patterns yes. on this. So this is why you wanted to ch meet, meet here? I did. Okay. Because... Can you show them that, Chelsea? Yeah. So underneath that paint, we have um, a film on our windows that was put on many years ago to conserve energy. Okay. The only problem is it it acts as a mirror and it reflects all the plants that are around here oh. so when a bird sees our building and our glass it sees trees and flies towards them no kidding and some birds are only stunned when they hit the glass many birds die when they depends hit the glass. on yeah how fast and what they're doing so, I'm sure. yeah there's a lot of research out there that's been done and um you need to break up the pattern so i got a decorative paint roller and we put tempera paint which is available really? at Just tempera any, paint. Yeah, any Hobby Lobby store or um, craft store and um, we put it on um, with the help of many staff and animal division. Oh fun! And, and actually to reach the second floor this year the Arbor Crew here at the zoo rented a boom truck to do some work and they worked with me for about six hours really? and helping me to get the upper windows which are um, quite dangerous for the birds. Get, oh, yeah, that makes sense because yes. the birds are up there a lot of yeah, times too. absolutely. And it's helped dramatically to do this. The numbers of bird strikes are way down. That for, quickly, for the just windows. by putting the pattern up there. Yeah, and I and I walk this building usually one to two times a day right. um, during migration season in particular, but I do monitor it throughout the year. Wow, and this is making a difference. Is this something that our guests, our digital guests at home can do? Yes, you can. Um, you can use the tempera paint. You can paint any pattern on your glass that you want to. How about that? It washes off easily with vinegar and water. Oh, no kidding. So it's not a permanent fixture necessarily. Right. And um, so, yeah, very easy to do. Or if you don't have a mirror film on your windows, which most people don't, mm -mm. you could just try pulling your blinds down or putting the curtains across a particular window that's a problem. I see. So it could be. So, I mean, I know a lot of us want to make a difference. Yes. So if we're really paying attention, especially during the migration season, right. that's really when you want to be kind of be a little bit more aware and yeah. vigilant of what your yeah. house kind of looks like. Yeah, because you have birds coming through that are not familiar with that um, makes sense. the habitat. Right. They're just moving through. But it is something to keep an eye on year-round because it can happen year-round. Okay. Just higher numbers usually during migration. Got you. Well, one last thing. You had asked me to print something off. Uh-huh. Oh, and here it is. <laughs> oh, oh i got to get down there. And I don't, I mean, you said, can you print this off for me? And I said, well, well, sure, we can, mm -hmm. what, but what is this? What's it all about? Okay, so um, if you're a coffee drinker, there's ways you can help birds in general by drinking um, bird-friendly coffee. Nikki Peterson, Nikki Peterson, 
<laughs> and the reason this is bird friendly co coffee is because it's grown in the shade um, down in Central and South America, which is the way coffee was originally, uh, coffee trees would grow. So oh, you still cool. have habitat for birds. A lot of other coffee makers pretty much mow down the, the tropical forest and just plant um, coffee plants. And so there's not a diversity of plants. There's no shade. Everything's out in the sun. So oh. they really, the birds don't want to use that habitat. And you just want to make sure that the um, coffee is certified bird friendly. The Smithsonian uh, Migratory Bird Center um, has a certification process okay. for this coffee. And 100% of the coffee in products that are certified is bird friendly. Wow. I mean, sometimes they'll mix different coffees together. Other companies, um, because the certification doesn't require 100% pure. Well, this oh, does. So it's very helpful. So it's a good way no for kidding. people that enjoy coffee to um, help our birds out. Other ways that you can do this is to plant native uh, plant species in your yard. You know, bird seed's okay to feed, but the best thing to do is to give birds natural resources. And you see a lot of this in front of us right now. A lot of native plants have been planted for pollinators um, so that they, they have plenty of food in this area. So there's many things you can do at home nice. to, to help birds. So if you didn't, as Velma was coming up, she was over here taking care of us, making sure we're nice and pretty. So take a picture of that, or you can always come back, guys, and take and see that. Obviously, this is going to be aired over time, and if time again, you can check it out. Mm -hmm. Snap a picture of it now if you'd like. Um, that's neat. So that's so it's all about bird-friendly coffee. Absolutely. And it's way the way it's being grown mm -hmm. benefits the birds that are migrating or the birds that are even in the area. Right. And if you think about it too, they're not using pest, using pesticides either. So oh, it's, wow. it's benefiting insects in the area. It's benefiting mammals. It's benefiting herbs. It's not just birds. It yeah. benefits a wide variety of um, animals. I love that idea too because yeah. it's, it's it's expanding that reach. Absolutely. For what's going on? Well, that is so neat. Debbie, Curators on Back, thank you so much You're for being here with us today. Okay. And we have another stop to make. Um, we've talked about animals now that sleep through the winter. Um, we've talked about animals that migrate or leave for the winter. Let's find out about animals who just deal with it. Check this out. All right, guys, you might imagine, where are they going now? <laughs> Today's all about how animals deal with winter. Let's go see what they're doing. Come here. They came on this side in the water. Obviously, we're at the, at the river otter habitat. And we're here for a pretty cool reason. So we've uncovered that some animals leave, some animals sleep, and Keeper Alley, come on in. <laughs> How do the river otters deal with winter? They stay in their same spot. They don't, they just, they don't hibernate during winter. They're out. Really? Yep. So they just deal with winter. Yeah, they do, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so what, so what would an otter be doing in the winter time? If they're dealing with it, I mean, there's, I mean, the food, water, where, what do they do? Uh, they are mainly awake during the day now. Okay. Um, they're usually nocturnal animals. Um, <laughs> but since it gets so cold oh. at night, they'll just soak up in the sun during the day. Oh, really? And just do all the hunting, hunting and stuff. Oh, they're hunting even? Mm -hmm. So what would they be eating in the wintertime? What's available for them to eat in the wintertime? Uh, mainly fish. Oh, of course. Uh, invertebrates. So, well, that makes sense. So yeah. they're out there hunting the fish, finding the food. Chelsea, hang on to the camera, but if you shoot over top of this, they'll be very curious as what you're doing. Don't let the camera fall in there, though. <laughs> Hi, otters. So we have two here, obviously. Yes. Can you remind us? We've been here once before, but can you remind us who's who? Yeah, so Bono is the one on the right, and Hannah is the one on the left. Uh, so. <laughs> They're grooming each other. They are. That's awesome. So how would they live together in the wild? What's, what's kind of their family unit? So... Um, they'll typically be separated, so oh, really? the, it, okay. you have male and males, so they'll have like a little bachelor group, oh, and you'll have some females with their own pups, and okay. yeah, you hardly ever find uh, an adult male right. with other otters. Oh, cool, yeah. okay. So everybody's getting along here, which is awesome. Yes. <laughs> Love it. What do you think about that, Chelsea? Pretty cute, huh? It's adorable. 
Gotta love a river otter. It's hard to top a river otter. And they're really curious. They're checking us out yes. you know, to see what's going on. <laughs> uh, Chelsea and I are new over here. And since the, the streamside exhibit, the streamside habitat is not open, we're, we're taping this. Obviously, we're taping this. We're going to so many different areas. This is November 17th. And streamside habitat's not open yet. And this is one of the reasons it's not open. It's really kind of hard to be to distance well between at the otter habitat and at the bobcat space. Um, so we're trying to figure some of these out. Eventually it'll be a one-way path, but right now it's kind of hard to figure out how we're going to do this. So on November 17th anyway, the streamside habitat is still closed. So we thought, you know what? Let's bring you an animal you haven't seen that you can't see yet. And it fits the bill really well for animals and winter time. What are they doing? How are they dealing with winter? So we talked about birds who will migrate. We talked about uh, the box turtle who sleeps. And these guys, winter is just another season to them. Yes, they love to play in the snow. So oh, do they really? They do. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. They left us. They're on the other side. They're on the other side? Chelsea, let's go to the other <laughs> side. Make sure our digital guests get to see these amazingly little awesome critters. Are they a member of the weasel family? They are. So they go into this very heavy sleep, and it's just they look like comatose. Really? Out. They're out. Yeah. <laughs> they love the water though and they're built for it. Man, they are totally streamlined. They do. Swimming through there. Yeah, their uh, fur is one of the main reasons why they can handle the coldness Oops, of the sorry. winter. Well, that makes sense. Because um, they have two different layers. They have the bottom layer, oh, the do. undercoat. I didn't realize that. keeps them warm. Yeah. And then their top coat is the layer that keeps them dry. Nice. So be like me. Having, oh, I have my name tag, but it's under my shirt. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so it'd be like me having my jet, my winter coat on and then a rain coat over top of that. Yes. Me. And you said that they are fishers, fishers, fisher animals. I brought a skull. <laughs> I love this skull. Look at this thing. You guys often ask if it's real or if it's a replica. This one is real. This one was donated to us um, by a gentleman. You can see those sharp, sharp teeth. So he's a fish eater. He's a meat eater. He, this, this otter, <laughs> mm -hmm. I say he. Um, if he's a fish eater, what kind of vor is he? What kind of eater is he? See those back teeth? Those are not for grinding up food. All those teeth are for catching and killing and no grinding. If he had grinding teeth, they might be an omnivore or an herbivore. But since he's just eating meat, he's a carnivore. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, fish is meat. <laughs> so they're classified as a carnivore. And you can see the streamlined shape of the skull. Move it down a little bit so I can get the mic away from my mouth a little bit. Helps him swim through the water, big eyes to see with. And again, those amazing teeth to catch their prey. And Allie, you said primarily fish. Yes, primarily fish. Very cool. Fun little skull to share <laughs> with you. Well, this has been a fun episode sharing, talking to a lot of, a lot of different people uh, about with winter coming, I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's the middle of November right now as we're taping. Um, but winter is coming. We thought it'd be interesting to share how some of the animals, especially locally, yeah. deal with winter. Because it's one of those situations that not everybody loves winter. Chelsea loves it. It's one of Chelsea's favorite season. And it's not. Chelsea's favorite season in the whole wide world. If she <laughs> had <laughs> just a season, winter would be it. Right, Chelsea? That, that's not quite true, Steve. Well, that's not you? I, I enjoy the snow. But it, I don't think it should be cold for no reason. There should be snow on the ground if it's going to be cold. Shouldn't be cold for no reason. All right, that's <laughs> so what's your favorite season then, Chelsea? Spring. You're a spring person. I'm a spring you person. Never met your mask is kind of springish. <laughs> it's kind of so. It's, I'll describe her mask to her. It's kind of it's kind of got animals all over it. It's got a couple little looks like a couple flowers, but it's in that greeny blue kind of colors. Uh, Keep rally. What about you? What your favorite season is? Uh, probably fall. You like fall, so yeah. you're you're happy right now in the yeah, middle of November I'm happy right now, yeah. as we're taping. Leaves are falling. <laughs> Um, this is our own kind of winter. This is our snow yes. as the leaves fall. <laughs> I'm a winter person. I love the cold. I love the cold. Living in Alaska for a while, just flipped that switch. I'm like, you know what? It is really neat to be out in the cold. 
<laughs> you see the otter over there. He's up on that. He's in his little grass mat over there checking things out. All right, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and hope you guys are having a great day. We're going to go ahead and sign off on this wonderful experience, meeting more than one different type of animal as he's scratching on his log there. This is Steve in front of the camera, Chelsea behind. Have a good day, guys. And we will see you soon. Stay safe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, y'all.